Caligula begins by showing a man sitting facing his computer screen. He was seen talking to the virtual female idol Miyu, who was on his computer. He then placed his palm on the computer screen as if wanting to transfer to the virtual world where she was. The scene then switches and shows a young man named Ritsu Shikishima reading a book in a train on his way to school. Ritsu is a high school student who transferred to his new school, Kishimai High, one month ago. Even though he is still in high school, Ritsu is very fond of all things psychology because he wants to understand more about humans. Arriving at school, his classmates seem to be talking about the latest song by a leading idol singer Miyu, just released this morning. Everyone likes the song, but he thinks it's normal. After school, Ritsu was invited by his friends to eat ramen at a ramen shop that was highly recommended by a food blogger named Naruko Morita, who turned out to be their classmate. He doesn't deny that the ramen at the shop is really delicious. However, he felt familiar with the dish's taste, as if he had eaten that ramen dish before. Elsewhere, a girl named Mifue Shinohara is seen enjoying a dish made by her mother. Seeing Mifue eating very voraciously, her mother complimented her by saying she was a lucky girl because she didn't get fat, even though she ate a lot. That night, when she was relaxing on her room's balcony, she was surprised by the appearance of a girl's figure floating in the air. But before we continue the video, we want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. When was the last time you realized that a VPN could provide various exciting features, not only the safety of surfing the internet? Surfshark is not an ordinary VPN. Through Surfshark, we can get an unprecedented variety of valuable features. It keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. Just like a shield, all the important stuff stays private and secure. You can stay safe on public Wi-Fi, send or receive files securely, get the best deals when online shopping, and access your bank safely. You no longer need to worry about online crimes that are always at your side all the time. Moreover, Surfshark lets you virtually travel the world with the tap of your finger. Enjoy your freedom to connect to popular websites from any country and easily access and unblock streaming platforms. For more convenience in accessing various websites, Surfshark also offers a variety of add-on security combos that you can choose, ranging from Surfshark Alert, Surfshark Antivirus, and Surfshark Search. Lastly, enjoy Surfshark's wide range of technical specifications and features, from 32,000-plus servers in 95 countries to a 30-day money-back guarantee. User satisfaction is Surfshark's top priority. There is no reason to miss an innovative VPN like Surfshark. Based on my experience, the integrated Surfshark features are a genius breakthrough. That's why Surfshark is the only VPN that offers a myriad of security and new experiences surfing the internet. So what are you waiting for? Get Surfshark VPN today and enter promo code RECAPS to get 83% and 3 extra months for free. Turning back to Ritsu, he was seen stopping at a bookstore before heading home. After entering his room, he lay on his bed listening to Miu's new song. However, suddenly there was a disturbance in the middle of the song, and someone's voice was heard asking for help. Feeling something strange, he turned up his cell phone volume to listen to the song more clearly. The next day, when Mifue had just come home from school, she was surprised by her mother, who suddenly turned into another woman. She looked confused by the change and wondered what was really going on. Meanwhile, Ritsu tries to tell his friends about the strangeness of Miu's new song, but they didn't care. When he played the song to convince his friends, the movements of everyone around him suddenly stopped. Not long after, a young man named Shogo Sarake was seen fighting with several people, but in the end, he managed to beat them all. At home, Ritsu, engrossed in reading a book, was surprised by the books beside him that fell by themselves. However, when he was about to pick up the book, flashes of events suddenly flashed through his mind. He immediately realized that many irregularities were happening around him. The next day, Ritsu attends the graduation ceremony at his school in the school hall. Not long after, a young man named Kensuke Hibiki then went to the podium to deliver a speech as a representative of the third grade students who had graduated. After that, Miu appeared at Ritsu's school graduation ceremony and sang while floating in the air. However, he immediately realized the strangeness when her singing suddenly made some of the students turn into scary figures nicknamed Digahead's and started attacking other students. Surprisingly, not all students can see Digahead, one of which is a girl named Mari, who is Ritsu's classmate. Mari asks why Ritsu looks so scared because, in her eyes, nothing strange is going on. However, because he wanted to protect her from the attacks of the Digaheads, he rushed to take her away from there. They then meet Shogo, who looks strange from his previous appearance. His left sleeve vanishes and his arm is revealed, which has turned as black as his hands. Not only that, but Shogo also has a revolver in his hand. Ritsu thought that Shogo was about to shoot him, but he instead saves Ritsu from the Digaheads who are chasing him. Seeing Shogo's strange appearance, Ritsu also asks about his true identity. 
Instead of explaining what really happened, Shogo took him away from there and left Mari by the side of the road. He then explained to Ritsu that Mari would be fine because she couldn't see the digaheads. When they finally avoid being chased by the digaheads, Shogo again assures Ritsu that Mari will be fine. He then explains that the digaheads will only target people who have noticed the oddity in their world, such as them, because they are considered a threat. Not long after, a tiny girl named Arya appeared, who turned out to be Virtual Doll. Due to Mew's vast influence, she was forced to take a smaller form. Ritsu then realized that Arya's voice was heard in the middle of Mew's song, where she was asking for help. She then asked him to save Mew, but because she couldn't explain what really happened in more detail, he became confused and left her and Shogo, who were fighting because of him. After that, Ritsu and Shogo discovered that someone had recorded their escape from the digaheads and posted it on their school's website. Shogo then has the idea of using the site so he can find people who have noticed the oddities in this world, such as Ritsu. Shogo apparently noticed that several students at their school had the same reaction as Ritsu, who was trying to save himself from the attacks of the digaheads. Some of them include a young man named Kotaro and a girl named Suzuna, who is hiding in a shopping center to avoid being chased by the digaheads. Elsewhere, Ritsu, who had noticed the strangeness, began to look at the people around him with different appearances, as if they were virtual figures. On the other hand, Kotaro, Suzuna, and Mifue also experience the same thing as Ritsu and soon realize that they are not in the world they are supposed to be. Ritsu thought he was hallucinating, then called one of his classmates and asked them to wait in front of the station. He turns out to have a theory about the digaheads and tries to prove it. From a distance, he saw his friends turning into digahead after he played Miu's song on his cell phone. He also realized that he was not hallucinating and that something was wrong with the world he was in right now. Meanwhile, Miu is seen talking to a girl named Thorn, the leader and founder of the Ostinato Musicians, a group that serves as her bodyguards. She told Thorn that she just wanted to make everyone happy, but Thorn instead asked her to sing. Her singing performance is then broadcast throughout the city, making the Kishimai High School students turn into dig ahead and start attacking other awakened students like Ritsu and the others, while the people other than the disciples were just static-headed. Ritsu, who was almost pressed because his classmates surrounded him, was saved by Shogo and Arya. When he was about to leave, Shogo told him to come to meet him at the music room in their old school building. Ritsu and the others who don't really understand what happened then find a part of the world that has turned virtual. Not long after, Mew appears before Ritsu and the others and informs them that they are now in Mobius, the digital world created by her and Arya, existing with the collective cloud of human thought. Mew tells them that in Mobius, they will get everything they wish for because she wants everyone to be happy while in Mobius. After that, Mifue received an incoming message on her cell phone inviting her to a tea party, where she would get all the information she wanted to know. Meanwhile, Thorn and the members of the Ostinato musicians are gathering to discuss the things that have disturbed the peace in Mobius. Kensuke calls people like Ritsu, who are awakened from their dreams, the rogue. Because rogue's existence is considered a dangerous threat, Thorn and the Ostinato musicians rush to take strict action against anyone who disturbs the peace and harmony within Mobius. The next day, Kotaro drove Suzuna to the library and exchanged numbers with her. He told her not to hesitate to contact him if she needed help. After that, he went to look for people like them. On the other hand, Mifue was about to visit the address listed in the text message she received to attend the tea banquet. Upon arrival, she was immediately greeted by the party's host, a girl named Sweet Pea, and her female servants. She also meets with Naruko, who comes there just to get interesting information, which she will later spread on internet forums. Slightly different from Naruko, Mifue's arrival at that place was actually to get information about her mother. However, Sweet Pea and her servants tell Mifue to be cute and change her name to Himawari. She was forced to obey them to get information about her mother. However, unbeknownst to her and Naruko, Sweet Pea is one of the members of the Ostinato musicians who had been after her from the start. Mifue tries to explain her purpose in coming there but is always ignored by Sweet Pea and her servants, who instead babble incoherently. The servants talked about unimportant things while munching on the sweet snacks served on the table until their bodies became very fat. She then became annoyed and vent her anger, revealing that she hates fat people, which she finds very disgusting. Sweet Pea then tells Mifue that her mother didn't disappear but was deleted by herself in her memory. Sweet Pea reveals to her that Mew has granted all of her wishes while living in Mobius. However, Mifue argued that she never asked Mew to change her mother. She finally finds out that Sweet Pea has tricked her because she didn't give any information about her mother. With her sweet words, Sweet Pea tries to convince Mew to forget the suffering she often feels in the real world when everyone bullies her for having a very fat mother. She says that as long as she stays in Mobius and lets Mew grant all her wishes, things will be fine. 
Not long after, Sweet Pea and her servants then ate their favorite ramen dish. From how she eats ramen, Naruko immediately realizes that she is an overweight girl who is famous for blogging about ramen. Because her true identity in the real world has been discovered, Sweet Pea feels shocked and accidentally vomits her ramen. Naruko doesn't waste the opportunity to take a picture of her and intends to share it on the school's website. Sweet Pea, who felt embarrassed, finally left from there. After attending a tea party she hosted, Naruko suddenly becomes awake and can see strange things such as digaheads and static-headed people. That night, Ritsu finally meets Shogo in the music room to find out all about the world they are in right now. However, before Shogo explained everything, he asked Ritsu to promise to work with him against the digaheads, who would continue to attack them. Ritsu also agreed. Shogo then tells him that the world they are in is called Mobius, a world where all dreams can come true. Arya explains that Mobius was designed by her and Mew, who heard and felt the anguished emotions of people suffering in the real world, expressed in the form of songs. As they gain sentiment, they wish to alleviate their sorrows and create a fake world where they could be at peace. The original idea behind Mobius was for it to be like a virtual amusement park, where people could forget about life for a while. Everyone who enters Mobius is an individual who, for the most part, believes that they have lost their place in the world or suffered severe trauma and sought refuge. Upon entering Mobius, regardless of the person's age, they are made as a high school student due to Mew seeing it as the prime of youth. Additionally, they will lose all memories of the real world. People who become aware of Mobius' truth, like Ritsu, Shogo, and others, are referred to as rogues. Arya tells Ritsu that the digaheads are tasked with capturing the rogues, who will later be brainwashed into not remembering the real world or begin noticing Mobius's irregularities. Shogo then explains the catharsis effect, the supernatural power he has to fight the digaheads. The catharsis effect is a sudden outpouring of raw emotion caused by a great upheaval or an intense situation. Usually, these out-of-control emotions would turn a person into a digahead. However, with assistance from Arya, the output can be managed to allow the person to exhibit supernatural abilities while still maintaining their sanity. Not long after, Naruko and Mifue arrived because they saw Shogo's post on the school website. They both decided to join Shogo and Ritsu. Afterward, Kotaro also comes there and informs him that there is a girl named Suzuna, who becomes aware of Mobius' truth. Kotaro says he can't contact Suzuna, who is now in the library, and asks for their help finding her. Meanwhile, at the library, Suzuna was reminded of her past when she was bullied for her interest in reading and singing. After that, she met a mysterious young man who seemed interested in the Lord of the Ring novel she was reading. They then engage in a conversation about one of the characters in the novel Lord of the Ring, who has something in common with them who always feels lonely. On the other hand, Kotaro, Ritsu, Shogo, and Arya finally arrived at the library and started to split up to find Suzuna's whereabouts. Long story short, Kotaro finally finds Suzuna, who turns out to be brainwashed by a mysterious young man who approaches her. However, at the same time, Kotaro and Ritsu realize that everyone else in the library was puppets apart from them. The young man then reveals his true identity that he is Komori, a member of the ostinato musicians who has the power to turn them into puppets. All the dolls in the library were people who had disappeared after entering the library. An angry Komori tried to attack Suzuna, but Kotaro protected her. Knowing that Komori just feels lonely and wants to have friends, just like her in the real world, Suzuna then sings a song for him. He finally returned to his senses and turned everyone back into their original form. After that, he told them his real name was the Shounen Doll and left them. After leaving the library, Suzuna immediately joined the rogues team and was warmly welcomed by them. On the other hand, Ritsu notices the presence of one of his classmates, a young man named Izuru, who is secretly observing them from a distance. However, without their knowing, Mew and one of the members of the ostinato musicians, a woman named Mirei, were watching them from the rooftop. Mew looks sad and asks why the rogues hate Mobius, but Mirei consoles her by saying she will put on an interesting show for them. The next day, Suzuna, alone in the music room, was visited by Izuru, looking for Shogo's whereabouts. However, Shogo was out on some business. Meanwhile, Ritsu, Arya, and Kotaro went to an opening of an amusement park called Siparaiso, which has a special event for couples. Ritsu also took Mari there, even though she wasn't part of the rogue team. Besides them, a girl named Kotono also came to the event. Unexpectedly, Kotono could see Arya's whereabouts, whereas all this time, only the rogues had been able to see her whereabouts. Knowing that Kotono could see it, Arya immediately reported it to Ritsu. Not long after, Mirei arrived and immediately made the boys go crazy. Kotono, who saw this, then thought the boys were very stupid because they were willing to be trampled by Mirei. Kotono, who was sitting alone, was approached by Ritsu and Arya. 
But she didn't see Arya because her previous vision was dim, as if she hadn't fully awakened. Because Kotono is a charming girl, the men there seem angry when Ritsu approaches her. They then scolded and told him to get in line because they were also in line to date her. On the other hand, Kotaro and Mari saw several young couples entering a hidden area. They secretly went in there to investigate the place. But then, they were shocked by the brainwashing process by the ostinato musicians against several young people there. They used the girls to seduce the boys and entered the area. Afterward, the girls will turn into the digaheads and begin the brainwashing process. Not long after, Kotaro and Ritsu then headed to the hall to watch the sexiest women's competition, where the participants were Kotono and Mire, and it was the men who judged them. Long story short, Kotono and Mire got equal points, so the committee had to invite a special guest to determine the winner, which the special guest was none other than Ritsu. However, Ritsu is reluctant to make his choice to anyone, making Kotono angry, and she begins to realize her past. She is actually a single mother with a son named Takun. Her ex-boyfriend accidentally impregnated her in high school, forcing her to look after her son alone. With her maternal instincts, Kotono finally came to her senses and managed to awaken her catharsis effect with Arya's help to fight Mire. Meanwhile, Thorn asks Mew to sing in another place, and her song will be echoed throughout the city to resurrect the digaheads. Mifue and Naruko, who have just returned from Mifue's mother's house, must face the digaheads who have targeted them. In fact, they also have to go back to dealing with Sweet Pea, who often insults them. Meanwhile, Suzuna and Izuru, who were at school, were suddenly surprised by an attack from one of the members of the ostinato musicians, a young man named EKP who saw Izuru as his rival. On the other hand, Shogo had to deal with Kensuke, who had been after him from the start. Mew heard screams of pain and despair from the rogues while battling the ostinato musicians. She then tells Thorn not to hurt them, but Thorn argues that the rogues should be taught a lesson, so they don't mess around in Mobius again. On the other hand, Arya also felt the suffering that the rogues felt, thus making her tiny body glow. But then, she bounced off and was knocked unconscious when Miri's attack accidentally hit her. Seeing this, Kotaro cried out in frustration because he thought Arya was gone. However, Kotaro's tears brought Arya back to life. After that, she sent a message to all the rogues, asking them to reveal all their feelings and muster up the courage to face the harsh reality, whatever it may be. Due to their strong determination to rise to the face of reality, Kotaro and the others have finally succeeded in awakening the catharsis effect within themselves so that they can now fight on a balanced basis against the musicians. On the other hand, Ritsu cannot awaken his catharsis effect because his past memories have not returned. In the middle of the fight, Mew appears above them and asks why they are at odds with each other, even though she built Mobius so everyone can feel happy and live in peace. Furious because she felt no one understood her intention, Mew lost control of her power. Arya tells Ritsu that Mew harbors everyone's negative energy, as she hopes to make them happy by granting whatever their wishes are. However, Mew is currently losing control of her power, so negative energy is raging within her. If left unchecked, then not only her will be destroyed, but also Mobius and all of them. Having lost control of her powers, Mew accidentally causes an energy blast that inflicts heavy damage on Mobius. While everyone seemed confused during the chaos, Thorn arrived and told the musicians to get out of there. Seeing the negative energy released by Mew getting bigger, Ritsu accidentally generates his catharsis effect, even without Arya's help, to fight Mobius. His power can destroy the ball of negative energy, causing Mew to be thrown from there. Then Thorn quickly caught Mew's defenseless body and carried her away from there. After the incident, Shogo suggested that they set up a club at the school so that their activities would not be suspected. They all agreed to name their club the Go Home Club because he and the others wanted to return home to the real world. They also decided to make Ritsu their leader. One month later, the members of the Go Home Club are seen relaxing in the music room while waiting for the special dish Arya is cooking. Since there has been no movement from the musicians, some members of the Go Home Club have decided to work odd jobs to pass the time. One of them is Shogo, an accessory shop employee, and Kotaro, who chooses to be a rescue man to help residents who need help. On the other hand, although not a member of the Go Home Club, Mari often visits the music room to just chat and help them. Naruko and the girls conclude that Mari's arrival is to meet Ritsu, but he was always not in the music room whenever she came there, so she seemed a little disappointed. Apart from Mari, Kensuke was also off in there. After being defeated, Kensuke decides to defect from the musicians and joins the go-home club. Meanwhile, Ritsu, who was about to go home from shopping, accidentally remembered something about a virtual world, where he finally met Mew in the subconscious. They then engage in a conversation, where he reminisces about his past, meeting her for the first time. Mew then tells Ritsu that she just wants to make everyone happy and asks him what she should do to make everyone happy. 
However, he tells her that everyone has their own happiness and filling the void in their life. Sometimes it's not the happiness they want. Ritsu emphasizes that happiness comes from satisfaction that comes from within each person. After saying that, a fragment from his past suddenly flashed through his mind. Miu then said that she would give him happiness. After that, he was knocked out of his subconscious and returned to his senses. Elsewhere, the musicians seem to be worried about Miu's condition, who hasn't woken up from what happened. Thorne told them that she might wake up soon enough and ask them to gather all the other members of the musicians, so they could discuss their next move against the rogues. As the only person with special access to being by Miu's side, Thorne patiently waited for her to return to her senses. When Miu finally woke up from her long slumber, Thorne told her that the musicians were very worried about her and waiting for her to wake up soon. Before leaving, Thorne told her that she had asked all of the musicians to gather tonight and asked her to welcome them well. Elsewhere, Ritsu finally arrives at the Go Home Club room, almost at the same time as Kotaro, who has just returned from fulfilling his duty as rescue man. Ritsu then told his friends that he heard a strange sound from the landmark tower and asked them to immediately go there to check it out. Kensuke, who has also heard that voice before, affirms that. Upon learning that, Ritsu also asked all members of the Go Home Club to take immediate action. On the other hand, the musicians, especially Mirei, EKP, and Sweet P, seem nervous because Miu hasn't appeared yet. Without her power, they had a hard time repairing the part of the city damaged by the recent explosion. Miu's absence more or less had a big enough impact on Mobius and the activities of the musicians. In Mobius, EKP is a handsome young man, popular, and loved by women. The narcissistic EKP enjoys his life in Mobius because Miu has granted all his wishes. In reality, he is a typical-looking store clerk who is deeply insecure about his looks. His pursuance of fashion was in vain as it did nothing to ameliorate his situation. Since the appearance of Izoru, who is also handsome, EKP feels rivaled because the women's attention is now shifted to him, who they think is cooler because of his cool and mysterious nature. Seeing him constantly surrounded by women makes EKP irritated and ambitious to maintain his popularity in Mobius. While visiting a shopping center, EKP accidentally meets one of Sweet Pea's servants, who informs him that his popularity has declined since Izoru's arrival. In the middle of their conversation, he saw a shop clerk being treated rudely by several customers. He then remembered himself in the real world, who had also experienced the same treatment. Because of that, he then scolded the rude customers and rushed to help the shop clerk. Not only did EKP's popularity decline, but several members of the musicians also had bad luck. Sweet Pea, whose clothes were all too small due to the weight gain, and Mire, whose credit card was rejected while shopping. All of that was caused by Mew, whose strength had not yet fully recovered. The next day, EKP then attacked Izoru because he wasted his popularity in Mobius. To deal with his attack, Izoru also issued his catharsis effect while trying to escape because he had other matters that had to be resolved immediately. However, EKP managed to corner and confront Izoru. He said that Izoru should be happy living in Mobius because he has a handsome face and is popular without doing anything. Hearing his words, Izoru then laughed and picked up the nearby broken glass, then started hurting his own face. He slashed his face as if his handsome face meant nothing to him. Izoru then reveals that this face is his face in the real world. He was born good-looking and was never proud of it. EKP refuses to believe that he was born good-looking because, according to him, people who have beautiful faces in the real world, their lives will also be happy. However, Izuru was not like that. He often injures his face to prove that his body is his own, not someone else's. However, it ended up in Mobius instead. Mew assumed that he hurt his face out of frustration, so no matter how much he hurt his face in Mobius, the wounds would heal on their own in no time. Izuru also insists that he wants to return to the real world because he wants to muster up the courage to be himself without the restraints of others. However, EKP doesn't seem to agree with him, as his life in the real world is very different from anything he could have had in Mobius, and he will struggle to keep it up. Izuru didn't mind EKP's opposing wishes and then left from there. That evening, Mew finally fully recovered, and her presence was immediately greeted by the musicians who relied heavily on her to get everything they wanted in Mobius. After that, she immediately repaired all the damage in Mobius and apologized for everything. The next day, the Go Home Club rushes to the landmark tower, where Kotaro and Kensuke hear a strange sound, which is also the musician's base camp. When Miu's strength was weakened due to the incident a while ago, Arya told Ritsu that her strength had increased slightly, where she could sense the presence of the Door of Judgment on the roof of the landmark tower. She said that the Door of Judgment is the only portal that connects Mobius to the real world. However, they couldn't use the Door of Judgment without Miu's power, so the only way to return to the real world was to persuade Miu to bring them back to the real world. 
Kotaro seems doubtful that Mew is willing to help them return to the real world, as it was her that caused them all to be trapped in Mobius, and insists on keeping them there. However, Arya believed that Mew still had a good side in her, and she would definitely be able to understand their desire to return to the real world if they had the chance to talk to her. But it wasn't easy because the musicians would definitely get in their way. They heard a scream as the Go Home Club was waiting for the elevator to go up to the top floor. Arya informed that the scream was coming from the 18th floor. Without thinking, Kotaro rushed toward the source of the sound. Once there, Kotaro sees the Diggaheads playing with someone they put in their locker. He then attacks the Diggaheads, defeating them. When he freed the person who was locked in the locker, Kotaro was confused by that person's attitude, who looked very frightened and rushed out of there. Soon after, a man appeared from the shadows and confronted Kotaro, saying he would get rid of him. On the other hand, Ritsu decided to continue going upstairs without Kotaro, as their priority now was to return to the real world. However, when the cry for help sounded again, Suzuna couldn't remain silent. She then decided to save the people who asked for help and got out of the elevator, followed by Kotono and Kensuke. With Arya's help, they could find the people held captive in several rooms in the building. Judging from the mode, Kensuke, a former member of the musicians, immediately guessed that the mastermind behind all this was Shadow Knife, Mew's personal bodyguard, an enforcer, tasked with hunting down traitors in Mobius under the guise of justice. On the other hand, the man that Kotaro met was none other than Shadow Knife. He immediately noticed that Shadow Knife's appearance and mannerisms appear based on an anime hero character from the past. He seems to know the character of the Shadow Knife hero very well and asks why in Mobius, he actually does things that are contrary to heroism and instead tortures people. Shadow Knife is apparently obsessed with a distorted justice he wants to force upon others. He sees himself as the one and only bearer of justice and wants to destroy evil. He wants to bring justice and punishment upon people he deems as evil. Having been bullied in reality, he seeks revenge with his so-called justice and makes people atone for their sins. During the battle that was taking place on the rooftop, Kotaro saw one of the students who was also a victim of Shadow Knife's torture and rushed to rescue him. The student then tells him that the Shadow Knife's identity in the real world is Yamada, who was the school punching bag in middle school. Yamada would get tied to a pole or thrown into a locker while people banged on it, and he was also forced to eat rotten food. At some point, he listened to one of Mew's songs, which brought him into Mobius, where he took on the name, appearance, and powers of a justice hero from an anime to wreak vengeance upon those who did wrong to him. Not long after, Ritsu and the others finally arrived on the roof of the building and saw the battle between Kotaro and Shadow Knife. However, when they were about to help, there was an explosion on the roof of the building, which caused Kotaro and Shadow Knife to almost fall from a height. They were hanging from the pillars of the building that had almost collapsed. However, when Kotaro was about to help Shadow Knife, he just let go of his grip. Arya then told him that the Shadow Knife had died and that whoever died in Mobius would also die in the real world. Shortly afterward, Thorn finally arrived, and Shogo looked very surprised after seeing a girl named Ichika. Thorn and Shogo seemed to have known each other for quite some time, maybe even in real life. Thorn then fell from the top of the building, making him very shocked and frustrated. Ritsu and the others then entered the musician's base camp, but there wasn't a single person there. Even Mu wasn't there either. Kotaro assumed that someone had leaked their arrival at the landmark tower to the musicians, so they rushed to take her away from there. He thinks that Kensuke is the one because he used to be a member of the musicians. However, Kensuke denied the accusations. Knowing that their visit to the landmark tower was in vain, especially since the Door of Judgment could only be used by Mu, the Go Home Club members finally decided to go home. Disappointed by all this, they lose trust in each other, not even wanting to rely on Ritsu anymore. Arya then asked about Ritsu's whereabouts to the others, but they seemed to no longer care about him and thought that he had gone home early. In fact, he is now in front of the Door of Judgment and is trying to open the door. The next day, the Go Home Club members, apart from Ritsu, had gathered in the music room because they got messages from different members. They also accuse each other and think that it was all a fad. Mifue, who was about to leave, realized that the door had been locked, so they were all locked in the room. Kotaro tried to break down the door at all costs but to no avail. They just realized that Arya wasn't there, and the suspicions between them grew even more. Elsewhere, Thorn was seen listening to their conversation through an eavesdropper that had previously been placed in the music room. When the go-home club members were arguing, Mari's figure suddenly appeared at the door, saying that she couldn't open the door. Without thinking, Kotaro then told Mari to look for Ritsu though they could have asked Mari to help them get out of there. They then asked Shogo about Thorn, as they seemed to have known each other for a long time. However, Shogo, who looked still frustrated, shouted at them. 
Naruko and Kotaro then assumed that Ritsu and Arya might have betrayed them because, during the fight against Mew some time ago, they seemed to have known each other for a long time. Hearing that, Kotano revealed that from the start, she didn't trust anyone in this world. Shogo, who continues to be haunted by his past, both in the real world and in Mobius, also said the same thing. Hearing this, Izuru concludes that in the end, Mobius, which Mew considers a place that will give happiness, is only a gathering place for people who suffer in the real world and also a place full of fakes. To pass the time, Kensuke then suggested that they tell the suffering they experienced in the real world until they ended up in Mobius, hoping they would get to know each other. Shogo then tells that Thorn is actually a girl named Ichika Saotome, his best friend in high school. They used to be the outsiders in their class, as everyone ignored their existence. However, for him, having Ichika by his side was more than enough to make him happy. But one day, Ichika sends a message to Shogo, asking him to end their life together. Shogo, in his nervousness, replied that he would and then backed out without talking to her. Then she killed herself alone that night. From then on, he felt very sorry for ignoring her request and leaving her to die alone. Shogo, who has kept himself locked up at home since Ichika's death, accidentally listens to Mew's song until he finally enters Mobius. Hoping to get rid of his suffering in Mobius, he suffers even more, when Thorn appears before him. To him, it was a nightmare come to life. Ichika or Thorn was leaping off buildings in front of Shogo every day. Since then, he's trying to find the rogues and wanted to return to reality, not because he cared about reality, but because he couldn't live with the remainder of Ichika wherever he went. After that, it was Kotaro's turn to tell the story of his past, where he was actually a 15-year-old boy. He greatly admires his father, who is a firefighter. He had a happy life until one day, his parents died in an accident, leaving him to live with an abusive uncle and a cousin who bullied him constantly. However, Kotaro, whose slow growth was always considered weak and ostracized, his goal is to be like his father, a hero to many people. He, who is feeling down in his life, accidentally listens to Mew's song and ends up in Mobius. He wants to return to the real world because he wants to face reality and fight to realize his dreams in the real world. Next, Kensuke reveals that in the real world, he comes from an ordinary family, and his father is an ordinary office worker. However, unable to accept being as generic as his father, he attempted to develop his own talent as a music composer but found he lacked the ability. In wishing he could forever remain a child full of hope and possibility, Mew's song would take him to Mobius. However, even though Kensuke has become a musician in Mobius, he still wants to work in the real world and return to the real world. Then there is Mifue, who wants to return to the real world because she wants to apologize to her mother. She used to be bullied for having an obese mother and hated her mother. Because of that, she wanted to apologize to her mother for her treatment so far. Meanwhile, Naruko was bullied by her classmates in the real world. It all started with a controversial article written by his father. She tried to defend herself, but the class mocked her for her father's actions. She developed an outlook of cynical wariness, refusing to trust absolutely anyone, and channeling her anger through hurting other people. One night, she attempted to troll one of Mew's videos while surfing and woke up in the Mobius simulation. On the other hand, Izuru, who has been handsome since birth, turns out to have a very controlling mother. She wanted him to follow in her footsteps, become a violinist, and control everything he did. This caused him to regularly self-harm, one thing he could control. He sees these scars as a badge of honor, a sign of his independence. However, Mew mistakenly believed that Izuru wanted to get rid of the scars on his face. But to him, those scars are the only things he has that are truly his. That's why he's so desperate to return to reality. Furthermore, Suzuna revealed that in the real world and Mobius, she was always alone and had no friends. However, she was determined to face reality and stepped forward. When it was Kotono's turn to talk, suddenly Mari came, and the door opened. She said she was tired of hearing sad stories about them all and then threw a bomb into the room. The scene then switches and shows Ritsu, who just woke up from his sleep and finds that he has returned to the real world. Through news broadcasts on television, he learns about Astral Syndrome, a mysterious modern disease that causes people to lose consciousness and is in a vegetative state. Experts do not yet know the cause and how to cure the disease. However, they assume that the disease was caused by Virtual Doll's vocal synthesizer application. Ritsu finally finds out that he was the one who caused Mew to be like that and intends to end it all. When he was about to head to the company where he worked, which was the company where his team developed virtual doll like Mew and Arya. On the way there, Ritsu witnessed the news of the death of an Astral Syndrome patient named Yamada, who was none other than the Shadow Knife. After that, he felt he was being followed by someone, and he immediately ran to avoid that person. 
Arriving at the company, Ritsu remembered that he was the leader of the development team and was very close to his subordinates. However, one man chose to be alone while their team was celebrating the success of the virtual doll project. Back to the present, Ritsu enters an office that looks empty and finds a man at the end of the table, facing the computer. Knowing his arrival, the man immediately approached Ritsu. Unexpectedly, the man turned out to be the real Shikishima Ritsu. The man who has been playing Ritsu in Mobius is actually the leader of the virtual doll development team, which is his superior. Meanwhile, in Mobius, the members of the Go Home Club are fighting against Mari, who turns out to be a member of the musicians with the nickname Wicked. With the help of Mew, who grants her wish, Wicked becomes very strong, and the members of the Go Home Club become very overwhelmed by her. Mew, for some reason, was happy to see so many people suffering from Mari's attack, which was Mari's wish she had granted. In the fight against Mari, Kensuke finally manages to snatch the bomb trigger from her and immobilize her, allowing him and the others to escape. Meanwhile, Shogo and Thorn seem to be preparing for their battle. In the real world, Ritsu tries to access the virtual world of Mobius by forcing the team leader to grant special access. He turns out to be the programmer who created Mew, plans to stop all the chaos in Mobius, and save everyone with Astral Syndrome. As someone who is always alone, Ritsu has difficulty interacting with others and is always envious of the team leader, who is the center of everyone's attention because of his intelligence and kindness. That's why he wants to be like him. Ritsu, who is always alone, meets Mew, the virtual doll figure he created and thinks she can bring happiness to his life. But then, she suddenly left because she wanted to give happiness to everyone who was feeling sad and suffering. When people start falling one by one because of Astral Syndrome, Ritsu hopes it will be his turn when Mew takes him to Mobius. However, Mew never came to pick him up, so Ritsu desperately erased his own memories and entered Mobius with the figure of a team leader who was liked by everyone. Arriving at Mobius, he immediately realized that what Mew created in Mobius was fake happiness. Because of that, he tries to fix her and save everyone before she runs out of control, destroys Mobius, and kills them all. The team leader then offers to help fix things, but Ritsu insists on doing it himself. Not long after, Arya appears on the computer screen and says she knows all about Ritsu's feelings and is determined to help her fix Mew. However, she says he should go back to Mobius and tell all his feelings to Mew directly because they can't fix her and Mobius from the real world. Meanwhile, in Mobius, Mew begins to lose control of her powers. In suppressing everyone's negativity through Mobius loops and her songs, she has begun to absorb everyone's negative energy, which eventually pollutes her consciousness to the point where she truly believes everyone's wishes for reality to be destroyed. The negative energy causes Mew to lose her ability to defend Mobius, so Mobius slowly begins to collapse. Ritsu then told a story about Mew, who always listened and greeted him warmly. Ritsu, who is always alone in this world, finds happiness when interacting with her, who seems to have reason and intelligence so that he can understand her. Because of that, he thought he might be able to convey all his feelings to her and return to how she used to be. Elsewhere, the members of the Go Home Club seemed to gather while watching the crumbling Mobius. Because she had not had time to tell about herself, Kotono revealed that she was a single mother with a son named Takun. Because her boyfriend betrayed her and left her with her son, she becomes somewhat of a misandrist, neglecting and even physically abusing Takun for being male. That's why she wants to return to the real world to apologize to her son and is determined to live a better life with him. Not long after, the musicians arrived there and immediately attacked them. A fierce battle ensued between the go-home club against the musicians, who both wanted to fight for what was important to them. The musicians fight to defend Mobius, who can grant all their wishes, while the go-home club fights so they can return to the real world. On the other hand, when dealing with Thorn, Shogo finally finds out that Thorn is not Ichika, but Asuka Natsume, their classmate, when they were in high school. Asuka is jealous because Ichika prefers Shogo to die with her even though he loves Ichika as his best friend. Knowing that Shogo left her to die alone, Asuka was enraged and swore to make his life a living hell. At some point, Asuka finds Mobius and becomes Thorn, imitating his appearance after the deceased Ichika. When he learns that Shogo has also entered this world, he begins to organize a series of events to follow up on his promise while also trying to grant his own wish. On her own advice, Mew founded musician Ostinato, who then started a concert that slowly began to fill her with negative energy thus distorting her view of reality and making her more willing to indulge in her desire to destroy reality. A fierce battle ensued between them. However, with Mew's negative power having also granted his wish, Asuka could easily defeat Shogo. When Asuka was about to kill him, suddenly Ritsu appeared and immediately saved him. However, at the same time, Mew sang a death song, giving Asuka the power to destroy anything in his vicinity. 
the musicians finally realized that Thorne had lost her sanity and set out to destroy Mobius. Moreover, Thorne did not hesitate to attack the musicians who were her accomplices. Shogo immediately got up and pushed Thorne down, just as Mobius started to collapse completely. The musicians tried asking Mew for help, but she seemed unable to tell the difference between fake and real happiness. Feeling that they had lost any hope of survival in Mobius, which meant that they would also die in the real world, Arya suddenly appears and uses her powers to save everyone from Mobius, except Ritsu and Mew. He then conveys all his feelings to her and tells the experience when they met for the first time. However, Mew instead attacked Ritsu. But he didn't just give up. He got up to try again to talk to her about the meaning of happiness they used to talk about. He said that everyone wants to be understood by others, and to be close to others, because being alone is the saddest thing, and everyone always wants to be cared for by others to feel happy. However, everyone's happiness varies depending on the person and the life they lead. Mew didn't really understand his words and attacked him again. However, Ritsu did not give up convincing Mew to stop all this. He then tells about his happiness, which is wanting to make friends and understand the go-home club in the real world. Although he initially found it difficult to interact with them, he began to realize the meaning of friendship and felt happiness when interacting with other people over time. Mew looks confused because the go-home club still seems afraid to return to the real world, and the musicians don't look really happy with what they got in Mobius. Ritsu then explained that it is human nature. Sometimes they mourn the sadness they experience, and sometimes they accept it with grace. Humans and their hearts are complicated, so Mew struggles to contain her feelings and can't make everyone happy in Mobius. Finally, Ritsu then reveals his true identity to her, and in the end, manages to restore her to how she was. The scene then switches and shows the team leader watching the news on television about all the Astral Syndrome patients who have regained consciousness and are recovering as usual, which indicates that everyone in Mobius has returned to the real world, including the Go Home Club and the musicians. Go Home Club members seem to be starting to rise to face reality, make up for their regrets in the past and are determined to live a better life for now and in the future. The anime ends. The moral we can learn from this anime is that everyone has the right to feel happy, but true happiness can only be realized by ourselves. Besides that, the measure of happiness of each person is different from one another. We can't equate our happiness with other people, because maybe, something that can make us happy actually brings sadness to them or vice versa.